God! 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 I've appointed the public defender to represent you so you don't have a so you have a lawyer this morning. And after I've done all that, I determine the conditions of your release if you can be released. You already heard all those instructions on tape earlier this morning. Let me remind you, you have the right to remain silent. I do believe that there is probable cause for the arrest. And, I'm, and you will be brought before the felony division judge at, a, uh, at, at the next uh, date on her or his calendar. All right. He is 19-year-old Damon Kemp, tonight facing two counts of second-degree murder. The two victims, both just 19, attended high school in Palm Beach County, and we're learning one of the young men, Trey Ingram, was living in Daytona Beach, while the other victim, Jordan Payton, was visiting at the time of their murder. Both young men had bright futures ahead of them before being fatally shot in Daytona Beach. Those who knew 19 year old Trey Ingram say he was a natural athlete. A young and inspired fighter, someone who I thought definitely had all the tools to become a world champion. A man who was uh, an aspiring boxer, he was an amateur fighter. Um, he won his first amateur fight a couple of months ago and by a knockout in the first round in 30 seconds. If I got you bro, I know you looking down. A former Bethune-Cookman University student accused in the December shooting deaths of two friends in a Daytona Beach apartment said he was high on marijuana the day his former roommate and another man were killed but wouldn't give any details about what happened. Damon Kemp, 19, was arrested, charged, and tried for the murder of 19-year-olds, Trey Ingram, and Jordan Payton. Damon was also charged with burglary with assault or battery. His mother believes in his innocence despite the fact that he admitted to the crimes. At a bond hearing, Damon screams as if in anguish. Welcome to Backyard Crimes. Hit the subscribe button and bell to be notified of more crime stories. This story takes place in Daytona Beach, Florida. Daytona Beach police responded to a break-in at the Jade Park apartment complex at 1.56 a.m. on December 7, 2018, and arrested Damon. The police said they were responding to a home invasion. This incident occurred at Unit 422 where Corey Mokhtar lived. Corey said he was awakened by a knock on the front door of his Jade Park apartment. At first, he thought it was his friend, who'd forgotten his key. He opened the door. Damon pointed a gun at him and said, I will shoot you. Corey said, I thought I was gonna die that night. He said Damon then started to push his way in, but he pushed Damon's gun aside, shoved him back and shut the door. He said, the guy was furious, still shouting outside. Corey had phone issues so he texted a friend to call 911. Another resident of the complex, Pedro Armando Santiago Uriarte, said he heard a knock on his door, Unit 411. He looked through his peephole and saw a man saying on his cell phone, I just killed. He said the rest was unintelligible. The man outside matched a description of Damon. When the police arrived, Damon kept walking toward a police officer despite the officer having his gun drawn and ordering him to stop. Damon kept walking around a police car toward the officer while one of his hands was concealed. When police confirmed that Damon did not have a weapon in his hands, one of the officers took him to the ground and handcuffed him. Officers also said Damon was yelling about Africa saying he was black and an officer was white and saying something about Atlanta. Police officers said Damon was soaking wet and yelling at the top of his lungs. Officers testified that Damon was acting erratically and blurted out, I killed Ace, I killed my friend, I shot him, referring to Trey Ingram. But he did not say where he shot Ace. In the grass near a pond, about 50 feet from where Damon was detained, another officer found a Glock handgun. Later, officers found money, scattered in the stairwell in front of Corey's unit. The bills added up to $423. On the ground near one apartment, police found an empty bullet clip and a cell phone. Damon was charged with armed burglary and was taken to the Volusia County Branch Jail. Damon would not give police a local address, just his home address in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Body camera video showed Damon saying, we are blacks. Africa, Africa, 
Africa. Don't do anything to my dad. My name is Damon Jr. I love you, Africa. We've got to separate. We've got to love each other. We've got to unite. Damon had mentioned Trey Ingram by name. He did not give the police Trey's address. It took 15 hours for police to find the bodies of Trey and Jordan in apartment 434. They followed leads that led to Bethune-Cookman University but that did not pan out. One officer's persistence led to the victims. The police went back and knocked on several of the apartments and they went to the victim's apartment. Now that it was light outside, they could actually see that there was a bullet hole in the door and another one in the stucco wall. There was a shell on the ground. They knocked and no one answered. Officers tried to open the door, but the victim's legs prevented it, so they had to push to open it. Trey and Jordan were found dead in the company of a pit bull that officers had to shoo away. They found two $20 bills on the floor, along with bullet shells. Closet doors were knocked down and items were scattered. An air mattress in a back bedroom was deflated. In front of the TV, there appeared to be marijuana. Another connection with Damon in apartment 434 was discovered through a Port Orange police traffic stop, where the apartment address was listed on the report. Both Trey and Damon were in the vehicle at the traffic stop, Trey was the driver and Damon was the passenger. The Daytona Beach police chief expressed his anger that none of the tenants in the apartment complex called the police after hearing gunfire coming from inside one of the apartments. Damon was already in jail when detectives connected him to the killings. On the night of the murders, Trey was online with his half-sister, LaDoris Giles. She told police that about 1 a.m. on December 7, She'd been playing an online video game with Trey from her home in Clearwater when she heard a man enter Trey's apartment. She heard Eve, Trey's pit bull, begin to bark, but heard Trey tell the dog to lie down, it's only Day Day. She knew that was the nickname for Damon. In the past eight months, she said, she'd spent up to 70 nights at Trey's place while Damon was there. She said Trey had been letting Damon stay at his place to help him out. She said she also heard Trey, via the online video game, ask Damon why he was pacing. She said her brother lived alone, but he let Damon, his friend, stay with him for several months before asking him to move out a few days before the murders. Jordan had arrived a couple of days earlier from Palm Beach County. She said Damon was acting strange. Damon was acting real crazy, Giles said. He was acting real weird. He kept telling my brother, I love you, he was pacing back and forth. He had never acted that way. She said she and her brother stopped playing the online game and her brother said he would speak to her in the morning. Quincy Stith, a friend of Damon said Damon had been living with him since October when Trey ordered Damon out of his place. Quincy had met Damon while attending Bethune-Cookman University in 2017. On December 6, hours before the murders, he said Damon became paranoid and began whispering in his ear. The two drove to a nearby grill and Damon continued to act erratically. When the two returned to his apartment, the man told investigators, Damon said he feared people were out to get him. He had been acting strange, talking about National Soil Day, and that the radio was listening to him. He said the bizarre behavior continued into the night. He then said Damon moved to his bed and said he was going to sleep with him. The man said he'd never seen Damon like that before and feared for his safety. He said he ordered Damon to move out, then drove him, at his request, to Trey's apartment complex where the two victims lived. He said he dropped off Damon about 7.15 p.m. Six and a half hours later, around 1.45 a.m., the man said, he got a call from Trey. Ten minutes later he got a call from Damon. He said he didn't answer either one. He testified that Damon had put him in a chokehold twice as he was driving them around town. Damon was from Stone Mountain, Georgia. This city is 13 miles east of Atlanta, his parents say he was a promising student who would never commit murder. Damon and Trey used to hang out, play basketball and football on campus and attended parties. Damon said, in our freshman year there were a lot of parties going on you know, so every other weekend we'd be a party or something like that. Trey, nicknamed Ace, was a former Bethune-Cookman University student from Palm Beach County who was planning to return to the university. He had dropped out in the middle of his sophomore year. He was a former Palm Beach County High School football standout. He wore number two for the St. John Paul II Academy football team, where he was a receiver and a running back. His mother said he briefly considered a career in the NFL and was an aspiring boxer, but ultimately had wanted to be a police officer. He had a contagious laugh, a good spirit, and a wonderful sense of humor. His mom described him as a sweet and generous young man. Friends said they worked out with Trey at a nearby gym.
was a young man who was uh, an aspiring boxer. He was an amateur fighter. Um, he won his first amateur fight a couple of months ago and by a knockout in the first round in 30 seconds. Those who knew 19-year-old Trey Ingram say he was a natural athlete. A young and inspired fighter, someone who I thought definitely had all the tools to become a world champion. Trey's brother said, my brother was always a calm, serene guy. He was always joyful. He had a personality that naturally attracted people. I believe that my brother's in heaven. So I find consolation in that. Trey had a big heart and had opened his home to Damon because he had nowhere to go. He also opened his home to Jordan. Jordan was a childhood pal of Trey's who'd come up for a visit. Jordan had been a troubled youth. In 2017, Jordan was charged with battery because two weeks after his 18th birthday, he punched a fellow inmate in the face at the dining area of the Palm Beach County Juvenile Justice Facility. It's not known why he was there. Later, he was sentenced to his 79 days of time served in the Palm Beach County Jail. On December 4, three days before he was murdered, Police reports said, Jordan posted a photo on Instagram in which he held up a stack of bills and four credit cards. A caption said, DM me if you need a bag before Christmas, and let's eat, and same day out. Jordan's cousin said just after the slayings that Jordan, my closest cousin, was considering going back to school to get his high school diploma. He said, Jordan was always helping people, Troutman said. He was cool with everybody. He also said Jordan never met Damon, Trey's off and on roommate. On December 9th, two days after the murders, Damon was wheeled in the court for a bond hearing. He shouted and screamed God. 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 Over and over at the top of his lungs. Trey's mother, Nerissa Carter Young, was very distraught and upset and had to leave the courtroom. Kemp's family and friends in court today shed tears, all as Trey's family got pretty vocal, even having to be escorted out. He bared his teeth, bulged his eyes, stuck out his bottom lip and talked over the judge. He was held and denied bond on two counts of second-degree murder with a firearm. He was also charged with burglary of an occupied dwelling, with assault, while with a firearm. That's for pushing into Corey's apartment and pointing a gun at him. While Damon was in jail, he gave a phone interview to a reporter. He said, I was on drugs, I'm not going to lie. All I can remember was smoking weed. I don't know if there was something in the weed or anything like that. Asked if he smoked the weed while with victims Trey, Ace Ingram and Jordan Payton, Damon said, I smoked before that. He denied he has mental illness despite his bizarre behavior leading up to the killings, and in court after he was arrested. I have never been suicidal nor homicidal, Damon said. Not even right now when I am in a mental health unit. The trial was held on May 24, 2023, five years after the murders. Damon had been held in the Volusia County Branch Jail since his arrest in 2018. A motive was never given for the murders, but court documents painted a picture of Damon as a disturbed young man. Damon did not testify at his trial. In her closing arguments, the prosecutor said that Damon shot Trey and Jordan in the back as they tried to flee. Trey suffered four gunshot wounds and Jordan had been shot six times. Their bodies were found inside the apartment door. Next, Damon left the apartment and jumped in the pond to wash off any blood. The prosecutor said Damon's palm print was found on a holster for the murder weapon. The defense relied on an insanity defense. He focused on Damon's erratic behavior as he cross-examined police officers. After a four-day trial, Damon was found guilty of two counts of second-degree murder and burglary of an occupied dwelling with assault or battery while armed with a firearm. Circuit Judge Leah Case will set a sentencing date for Damon. Each count of second-degree murder carries a minimum of 25 years in prison. My sincere condolences go out to victims' family, friends, and loved ones. Please subscribe and leave a comment below. I'll see you in the next video.